scientists on the ground continue to innovate ways to improve satellite data accuracy. Surfing for science may seem far-fetched, yet that is exactly how Dr. Bob Bruin of the Plymouth Marine Laboratory is pioneering a new technique in satellite oceanography. By equipping his surfboard with a device called a smart fin, Bob can measure sea surface temperature and motion of coastal waters with his smartphone. Later, Bob can use the smart fin data he has gathered to better interpret Sentinel-3 satellite data. The Sentinels are part of the Copernicus program. Using the three instruments on board, the satellites gather information on ocean color, water quality, changes in sea level, and, most important for Bob's research, sea surface temperature. With over 40 years of thermal radiometry, um, we have now, uh, from our satellite platforms, we can begin to get a really good understanding of how temperature is changing in the near shore environment. And temperature is a critical component of our oceans. It controls the biology um, through changes in growth rates and reproduction. Controls the physical environment together with salinity, it controls the density of the ocean, how coastal currents move, and it's also a fundamental component of marine chemistry. The reaction rates of many chemicals are temperature dependent. The gases that move from the atmosphere to the ocean are temperature dependent. In situ data gathered by scientists like Bob is extremely important as it complements and helps to verify data provided by the Sentinel satellites. For example, the temperature of coastal waters is difficult to measure for space, where we have very high levels of marine biodiversity. So scientists find new and ingenious ways of increasing the number of in situ measurements in these waters. With the smartphone, for instance, surfers and other water sport enthusiasts can gather data while enjoying their hobby. dispatched two new satellite missions to observe the most critically changing regions, the poles. NASA and the German Research Center for Geosciences, GFZ, has launched GRACE FO, continuing the revolutionary gravitatory measurements of its predecessor, GRACE. ISAT-2, with an advanced laser altimeter system, is continuing the work of its predecessor. This new technology will help study ice sheets, but also sea ice, glaciers, permafrost and snow cover. Collectively known as the cryosphere, these frozen zones help sustain stable conditions for life on Earth. ISAT-2 uh, is NASA's latest technology to measure the elevation or the height of ice sheets. Uh, and by repeating those measurements through time, we can measure how ice sheets are changing. It'll also allow us to measure the height of sea ice, which is a way to understand the thickness of that sea ice. And so it's really a huge advance forward in our both our precision of elevation change measurements as well as coverage. Each of those six beams gives us much more data than we've ever had before. ISAT-2 is designed and built here at NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center, and it does take advantage of many of the latest advances in that technology. It's really an excellent tool for studying changes in ice sheets and in sea ice. For sea ice, it's really critical. It plays a first order effect in weather patterns around the world. Sea ice uh, in the Arctic Ocean regulates the exchange of heat and water vapor between the ocean and the atmosphere. And as sea ice gets thinner or thicker, it uh, either allows more or less of that heat exchange to happen. For ice sheets, as that uh, ice is lost back to the ocean, it directly uh, goes into sea level rise, which of course impacts folks worldwide. So NASA scientists cross the Antarctic, taking altitude and radar depth measurements to help calibrate ISAT-2's instruments. One of the other experiments we were doing 
is leaving out what we call corner cube reflectors to uh, get an assessment of the pointing of ice hat to. When we make an elevation measurement, how are we sure it's in the right place? So in this picture, here you can see a bamboo pole with a little white cap on the end of it. And embedded in that cap, a little piece of glass about as, about as big as your, your pinky nail and calibrated to return green laser light from the satellite 